In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how Amazon pay-per-click PPC works. And it's going to be a very simple to kind of follow video because it's an area where Amazon sellers get very, very confused. I've seen on YouTube, there are some massively long tutorials. There are very, very short little uh, bits of advice as well. But I think what's most important is you actually understand how it works because if you don't, you're just going to end up wasting money on random campaigns, not knowing whether it's working or it's not working, not knowing whether it's actually damaging your listing or helping, and also not knowing whether you're actually making money or losing money, whether you're just paying Amazon all of your funds and then you think you're getting sales, but really you're actually losing money on every single unit. So I'm going to try and help you with that here today. Now, if you're a complete beginner and you've not started selling on Amazon at all, this will help you as well. Because nowadays in the online business world, you have to understand PPC, whether it's on Amazon or for example, YouTube, Facebook, Google ads, generally, etc. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to actually use examples. So it illustrates the point a little bit better. So I've gone for a random electronic product to get started with. So these are shaver adapters, which sell for kind of 10 or 15 pounds here in the UK. Now, the reason I've used this example is, it's generally an item, electronic products, generally they have a lot of demand. So as a niche in general, they make a lot of sales. So the first kind of thing to share with you, uh, because a lot of people have been commenting on my videos and they're asking a lot of questions about PPC and they get very confused. So let's first start with, why are we doing PPC? And then we'll go on to exactly the type of campaign we want to achieve our goal. So let's split that up right now. So first things first, two different reasons, main reasons, again, I'm just simplifying this. There's two reasons why you want to do PPC in particular. The first reason is obvious. You have a product to sell and you want to make more sales for your product. So your product makes more sales with PPC. So you spend some money to make some money. That's the first reason. And then the second reason, which is completely different. So it's completely different to product sales. The second reason is rank. So what you're doing with product sales is you're spending five pounds, putting it into the machine and you're making a 20 pound sale as an example. Now with the rank, it's a little bit different. You might spend 10 pounds even, you might spend more. So you're not actually making that much profit per sale, but what you're doing with that particular sale is you're moving up the ranking with your product. For example, if you are selling a shaver adapter, when people search for shaver adapter in your particular marketplace, you might be on page four or five, for example. And it's actually good to get a baseline. Check where you are for your main keywords. You can use product trackers as well. For example, Helium 10 as a tracker if you want to, but you can easily do this manually yourself. Just check it, note it down on a Word file or write it down somewhere. Um, for example, for shaver adapter, you might be on page five, position number four. Now, what happens is if you're doing PPC correctly, your ranking improves. So you might, with a few PPC sales, targeted PPC, you might move to page two or page one. And then what happens there is you're making sales from PPC, but you're also making what we call organic sales. That means sales where people are just finding your product listing on Amazon and purchasing it, but it's not from a sponsored ad. It's not you artificially putting your product listing high up on the ranking which is the sponsored ad. But let's go into that in a little bit more detail now. So now when we're back on the marketplace and we look through this, you'll see this sponsored ad at the top, which obviously means if I click on this, then this particular seller will get charged for that click. It might cost them one pound, two pounds, 50 pence, 50 cents, whatever it might be, they're getting charged. So they're artificially putting their listing there. However, their actual organic listing will be further down here somewhere. So it's actually reasonably high. It's on the first page, a few places down. Now, what do you think this seller is doing? They're already on the first page. They're making sales already. They're trying to maximize their sales and keep hold of that position on page one. So they want to keep the ranking up as well, but they also want to make more sales profitably, potentially with PPC. So there's two things that you need to think about here. Now, First of all, understand that your situation will be different from any other seller. So there's no one size fits all. So let's say you're watching this video right now and you've got a product and you're struggling to make sales. Well, then you have to think about this very carefully. Do you want to use PPC, your money, your budget? Let's say you have 50 pounds or dollars. Do you want to spend it trying to improve your rank or do you want to spend it trying to just make as many sales as possible with that 50 pounds, as many sales as will allow you? because they're two very, very different things. 
and there's tricks that you can use to kind of maximize sales where you don't spend that much, but it doesn't help your ranking. But then there's tricks you can use to maximize ranking, like you care about your long-term ranking with this product. So do you see what I mean there? You might have a product and it's not doing very well, and maybe you didn't select it very well, and that's fine. You still wanna try and sell out of your product and move on to a better product. However, in the, on the flip side, you've just started. You, your full hopes are with this one product. You wanna sell it for many years to come. You just wanna get that ranking so you can get organic sales as well. So how you approach it will be very, very different. Now, what I'm gonna do first in this video is we're just gonna talk about basic campaigns. And the most basic is the automatic campaign on Amazon. And we're gonna talk about the scenario first where you just wanna make sales. Look, you just don't wanna to spend too much money and you just wanna make as many sales as possible. So let's get back on the whiteboard and actually explore that further, how it works. Now, just a quick pause. This is gonna be a longer video and the reason for that is that I wanna explain as best as I can exactly how it works. If you are enjoying the tutorials, please comment below. I appreciate all of the support on the channel. Hit the like button as well and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Now, in terms of how PPC works in general, remember I said at the beginning, this can be for Amazon, it can be for YouTube, Google, anything. I spent well over a million pounds, probably a lot more than that, like I don't know the exact figure, on many different platforms when it comes to PPC. So I do know what I'm talking about with this, but Basically, what you're really looking for here, it doesn't matter if it's a product or whatever type of business you're in, what you're basically doing is you're putting money in to PPC and then money comes out. And if I find something, for example, if I told you there was something where if you put one pound in, it returned three pounds and you could crank it up as much as you wanted to, what would you do to that machine there in the middle? Every time you put a pound into the machine, it spits back out three pounds. What would you do? Well, obviously you would crank it up to the max, <laughs> like as high as it could go, to the absolute max, whilst maintaining that return on investment. Now, if you're smart with your Amazon PPC, you can potentially do this as well for certain campaigns, but you'll always reach a limit. So that's a kind of nowadays in the online world, that's a really good scenario, kind of the best scenario you could have, or potentially even more. Uh, again, it depends on campaign, but on a high level, a big spend, if you could do one to three or something like that, you're doing really, really well. Now, this is the problem when it comes to Amazon sellers. My, my next kind of scenario is, what if you put one pound into your Amazon campaign and that gives you one pound back? So you're basically kind of breaking even on your campaign. What do you think about that? And then the other one is, you're putting a pound in and you're getting back either nothing or you're getting back 0 0.2 or something like that, for argument's sake. And these are all common kind of scenarios for Amazon sellers. Now you, you have to understand that the one-to-one, -one, in certain circumstances, that can work, that can be good. When, when you talk about, for example, you first launch your product. So you're putting 100 pound in, you're getting 100 pound back. You're not really losing money, you're not making money. But there is a benefit. Remember, I talked about that ranking. What if, Whilst you're spending 100, getting back 100, your listing is moving from page five to four to three, etc. The other scenario is people who start selling on Amazon, they put a 100 pound budget into their campaign, they start seeing some sales, like two or three sales, and they don't wanna switch their campaign off because it's making them some sales, it makes you feel better. You know, it's, it looks nice to make sales on Amazon um, and you kinda of get a little bit addicted to that but they're not really doing the numbers properly and they're not realizing that they're losing money or sometimes a lot of money on each sale generally. And it's, there's no real goal with the campaign. It's not going anywhere. You're just making random sales and you, you don't have a, a clear plan in mind. Well, that's gonna be very painful for you going forward. And what you need to do there immediately is you need to switch that campaign off. So if right now you're selling, you've got, you know, if you followed some of the YouTube tutorials, you've probably got three, 400 campaigns. Switch them all off, switch everything off. If this is clearly losing your money, switch everything off. You don't need to be running these campaigns randomly. And there's no point, you, you know, you're saying to me, oh, Sajad, you know, I don't want my inventory sitting around. Like, let it sit around, switch everything off, learn how to do it first, and then come up with a better strategy and understand why your PPC sales are not profitable. Because even if your product is complete rubbish, your ranking is 
very, very poor, you can still make money from PPC sales because remember, artificially, Amazon is putting your product right to the first page a lot of the time or the top of the second page or on some of your competitors' listings, so it's there. But there's something wrong, there's some reason. And that's something you have to kind of diagnose. For example, I'll give you a very easy example with this. Let's switch back to the marketplace. Here's my trusty shaver adapter again. So $15.99. Let's say for argument's sake, I was selling this product and I just, I just feel like selling it for $35.99 because you know, I wanna make as much money as I can. What do you think is gonna happen to the PPC campaigns if I increase it to $35.99? Even if I change nothing with the campaign, it's got all the fancy keywords you want in the campaign, I've adjusted the bid perfectly, it was making good sales, that particular campaign. What do you think would happen to it if I increase the price? Well, people are gonna still click on it like they were doing before, but they're not gonna purchase the product. It's just not gonna convert. And then suddenly what will happen is, you're gonna get a lot of campaign spend and you're not, not gonna get any sales. But understand that that was not an issue with the campaign, that's my point. That's an issue with the listing. And there could be many issues with the listing, but if it's not converting, if once you get people there to your machine, your product listing, your page, if you're not then converting a certain number of them into a sale, then this is a complete waste of time. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at it, if people don't come to your listing and think, actually, yeah, I'll buy the product. If one in four, one in five people are not doing that, or sometimes one in 10, it depends on the niche, then just switch everything off and have a rethink. Consider reducing your price, consider adding vouchers, consider doing other types of deals. I'll discuss that all in a separate video. If that's a problem you're having or you think you're having, comment below. I'll do a full kind of video on that where we diagnose exactly why your listing might not be converting and how to actually work out whether it is or not. Because at the end of the day, you wanna make decisions not based on your emotions, but based on actual data points with this and with any business. It doesn't matter if it's online or brick or mortar. So let's get back to that first scenario where you just wanna make sales as cheap as possible. You think your listing's converted, you made some sales in the past, you just wanna get rid of products or you just wanna sell them, uh, try and make as much money from this product as possible and then you'll worry about ranking later as you kind of move forward. So you've got your product there and let's say it's selling for 20 pounds at the moment. You wanna make as many sales as possible. The easiest and simplest way to do this is with an automatic campaign, but with a caveat. And I'll come to that in a minute and exactly how we're gonna set this up. The great thing about an automatic campaign, and automatic campaigns are very underrated on Amazon if you don't know what you're doing. They're really good because you're really leveraging Amazon's own, uh, own algorithm to get you sales as cheaply as possible. And you have to give it kind of time to work. But these algorithms that they use, even YouTube, Google, uh, Facebook as well, they have amazing algorithms where you actually don't need to do that much uh, anymore. You don't need to nitpick through your campaigns and check them every hour to see what's working, what's not working. You don't need to do any of that anymore. You did need to before. That's why nowadays you get less and less PPC agencies because they're kind of nearly redundant because the algorithms are so advanced when it comes to optimizing your campaigns. So I hope that makes sense. So what we're doing here is we want Amazon to find us sales anywhere in the marketplace. If Amazon can show a shaver adapter to somebody who's looking for, I don't know, a baby bottle, and they see the shaver adapter and they're like, actually, you know what, I need one of these as well whilst I'm getting stuff for my baby. Well, that's good. It's getting you a cheap sale and you don't care where the sale is coming from. You don't care if it's when people are searching for shaver adapter. You don't care if it's when it's another competitor's listing. You don't care if it's somebody watching an Amazon Prime video, it doesn't matter. As long as you can get sales as cheap as possible, it works for you. Because that's all you care about if you're looking to sell as many products as you can for the cheapest price possible. And understand that if your product's not going well and you don't have ranking anyway, then don't worry about ranking because it's not something that you're looking at doing long term. And remember, a lot of the time with ranking, you may need to break even with your A cost or with your profitability on your ads anyway. So how do we actually do this? So now that we've got a clear goal in our mind, I've got a product, I know if somebody lands on it, it, you know, it, it does convert from time to time. I just wanna make as many sales as possible for as cheap as price as possible. Well, run an auto campaign. Go into your uh, dashboard, open up a new campaign. It's very, very easy campaign to do. Call it whatever you want to, uh, automatic, shaver, adapter, automatic. But what you wanna do here is you wanna set the bid as low as possible. And what you wanna do is set it for dynamic bidding down only. And what that means is 
when Amazon actually bidding and uh, against other competitors also bidding for certain keywords, competitor listings, that it doesn't up bid because you don't want that right now. You actually care more about cheap sales from anywhere. So that's what you wanna do, as low as possible. Now this leads me to another important point and this is why I'm using an example of an electronic product. So let's discuss that now because some of you might have uh, products already that are just, the campaign's not spending or you're running an automatic campaign and it's not making you any sales. Let's discuss that right now. Now the problem is in a massive niche, like for example, any electronics niche in generally. So this is the niche. In a 24 hour period, there are so many searches for a product or there's so many people looking for a shaver adapter. Let's say in a particular given day, 500 people are desperate for a shaver adapter and one way or another, they're gonna buy a shaver adapter. 500 people here in the UK, for example. That's the kind of size of your niche in a 24 hour period, which is pretty big. And let's compare that to, let's say somebody who's looking for, struggling to think of anything that's kind of low demand on Amazon, but let's, let's say mouse mat, a gray, it has to be a gray mouse mat, right? So let's say there's 50 people searching for a gray mouse mat, and you've got 500 searching for the shaver adapter in a 24 hour period. What that means is if you're searching for the gray mouse mat and there's only 50, then if you have a campaign where you're spending 20 pounds a day, what you might find is because the niche is kind of small, Amazon will spend 15 pounds of your budget every single day. And it won't even spell, spend the whole 20. And to get the whole 20 spent, you need to kind of bid a bit higher because it's giving some of the clicks to some of your competitors, some of them are coming to you, if that makes sense. However, if you're in this niche where there's 500 searches a day, Amazon will spend your 20 pounds and it will disappear by lunchtime. So by 12 p.m., it's already spent 20 pounds. And then you're getting notifications and emails and Amazon saying, look, you can spend a gajillion pounds more. Why don't you do it? Even though you made no money from the 20 pounds. So you have to be very careful with that. A smarter way to do it, if you've already got a big niche, is you wanna calm that spend down. You want it, the, the 20 pounds to spend evenly. And if you're in a niche where the demand is a little bit higher, what's really cool is you can cut down your bid what that means is out of that 20 pounds, every time Amazon has that opportunity for you, you're telling Amazon, I only wanna bid 20 pence to try and get somebody to click on my listing rather than two pounds. So you can see, big difference. So point two bid rather than two pounds. However, in this other example, you actually wanna increase the bid. If your bid is 0.5 at the moment, you might wanna increase it to 0.7 or 0.8 because it's not even spending your money. So that's important to note. And then the next important thing to note, if you're generally just wanting to get as many sales as possible, if Amazon is spending your money quickly, you wanna keep the bid as low as possible. Because the good thing about the automatic campaign, as long as you don't put any restrictions on it, no negative keywords or no, no nothing like that for now, is let Amazon search all over the place, but you're only bidding very, very low or even lower than your bid. That's the best way to do it if you just wanna make sales. What you might find is very quickly, if you lower, lower your bid significantly, there's a sweet spot. So let's discuss that kind of sweet spot right now. So let's say we're using the 20 pound example again. So this is your whole 20 pound, like a 20 pound note. And throughout the day, it's spending money. So from left to right. And what happens is if you keep your bid low, it will spend your money gradually throughout the day. But because it's going for places that are so obscure, like, like I said, the example where a shaver adapter, it might show your uh, listing if somebody's just generally looking for um, an actual electric shaver machine or a dry shaver, uh, like a Gillette blade or something like that, it might show your ad, even though that's not really what they're looking for, they might think, well, actually, you know what? Let me buy an adapter as well and you might only spend 20 pence or 30 pence for that click rather than two, three, four pounds. That's what you want there. And even if they don't buy it, that's okay because you're bidding so much lower in general than probably what you're doing already that even if 10 people say no to it, you've only spent two pounds if your bid is only 20 pence. And then what if another 10 people click on it, but one of them purchases? Well, then so far you've spent four pounds, but you've made a 20 pound sale or 15, 99 sale or whatever. So your ACoS there is actually pretty good. So you're actually making profitable sales from PPC alone. 
Now, this might not help your rank at all. Because remember, this is random. Amazon with the automatic are just showing your um, uh, listing all over the place. And if they find something's doing a bit better, the computer algorithm automatically puts more budget that way. So that's the first thing to kind of uh, really note there with the automatic campaigns. There are many, many reasons why your particular automatic campaign won't be working. But I'm just using a general example here so you understand what we're trying to do. This is one way to do it. The other kind of best way to do it when it comes to ranking is, again, you have to remember your goal's completely different here. So you're trying to go up the ranking in terms of pages, your organic ranking. You're trying to increase your organic ranking. So you get some sales where people are not having to uh, click on your ad on a sponsored ad, if that makes sense. So your goals here are completely different. But to do this right, you have to remember, let's just go back to our niche example again, and we talked about 500 people searching for shaver adapter. Well, if 500 people are searching for shaver adapter, but only three people per day are searching for some other obscure keyword related to a shaver adapter, this is the keyword we want to rank for because it's where most of the people are. So if there are 600 people who buy a shaver adapter every single day, but 500 of them buy it from that keyword, shaver adapter, rather than any other keyword, that's what we want. Let me just illustrate that clearly so it makes 100% sense. So let's go back onto the marketplace. So I'm back here with shaver adapter, but what if they're searching for some, some something else? So what if they're shaver, um, what, what, what else could they be searching for? Let's have a look. Plug UK, shaver adapter, plug UK black or something like that. Or let's have a look at their um, actual listing titles. So they could be searching for something like bathroom electric socket or something like that. Let me just type in that. So I've just searched for bathroom electric socket and yeah, it's slightly different, but you're getting a lot of the same products popping up again. And look what's interesting in terms of sponsored ads, these people are showing up again because it's possible they've got an automatic campaign. However, this is where it gets very different because, because we want ranking, we want the sale to come from somebody who types in shaver adapter and buys our product not bathroom electric socket. We don't want to rank for that particular search because we know that only three people might buy a shaver adapter every day from that. We don't care about that. We want to follow the money here, uh, literally. So how do you actually do PPC to get organic rank for that particular keyword? Well, back on the whiteboard again here, it's very simple again. And the, the best things in business tend to be very, very simple. As, when you start overcomplicating these things, that's when you get into problems when it comes to business. And believe me, I, I, I talk from experience there. So shaver adapter, 500, that's the search volume. How are we gonna run PPC for that? Very easy. You've heard of manual campaigns, I'm sure already. You literally create a manual campaign with that particular keyword. Now this could be a manual broad, it could be phrase, it could be exact. Usually exact can be better, but typically exact is a, can be more expensive. It's usually better to go for broad or phrase. But again, let's talk about the budget here because you might say, well, Sajad, I've already got a campaign running and it's a manual campaign and it's 20 pound budget and I'm not making any sales or Amazon are not even spending the 20 pounds. They, they literally don't spend any of my money. Well, what is the issue there? The issue is likely to be either you're actually aiming it at something whereby it's an obscure keyword where just nobody's searching for it. It's not something that you really want to rank for anyway. Or you are doing the wrong type of campaign here or your bid's not high enough. Because if you break it down, th those are usually the main reasons. Now, one thing you can do is if you've got an exact that's not spending or you're making the odd sale, but it's too expensive, why not switch to a phrase or a broad? Because Abroad will have that keyword like shaver adapter, but it'll have loads of other stuff like we saw before. It might say other stuff like UK pin socket or the color of the product as well. But you're still getting uh, some brownie points from Amazon for actually making a sale with that keyword sh shaver adapter as well. So you could actually switch to this and you might find that your costs are a lot lower. Uh, or not, low, not a lot lower, but potentially a little bit lower. And then the other benefit is you might find, apart from the costs, being lower, you might actually find that you're making more of a volume of sales and Amazon is more efficient with your budget and it works better for you. Because at the end of the day, remember I, I, I use the example of one pound in, three pound out. Well, with 20 pounds, you wanna see how much you can get out. 
and you want that to be as much as possible, but with a ranking PPC, as long as it's break even and you're not losing money, that's still a good position to be in too, because all the while you're improving your organic sales as well. So how does that work? You're spending 20, you're making 20, but when you first launch, you were making zero organic sales. But within two, three weeks, you're still spending 20 making 20. But now you've got reviews for your product, your ranking has gone up, so you might be making 30 sales a week of your product without spending anything at all. So the way you have to think about it is that 20 to make 20 is really 20 to make potentially five or 600 pounds if you include organic sales as well. So this is kind of my point with this video is just to give you a little bit flavor about how really Amazon PPC works, the structure of Amazon PPC. So your take home message here really is keep it very, very simple with the campaigns. Now, if you want me to actually go through you know, the buttons to click when you're creating a manual campaign or an automatic campaign, more than happy to do that. Just comment below. And probably what I'll do is I'll expand this into a series of PPC videos, where again, I just try and simplify things and break it down for you. Again, if you don't really know what you're doing with PPC, don't start spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds because you will just be losing money and Amazon will eat a budget. But if you understand what you're doing, then you'll know that this is very, very powerful. If you can find a campaign that works and allows you to spend as much as you can and is making you lots and lots of profitable sales, then it's game over. Now, why is that? I'll use one of my products as an example of this. So I have some products that are very high in demand, but the benefit there with PPC is you can find campaigns where you can spend a lot more. So you can spend 50 pounds plus every single day and then that could return you just on the PPC campaign. That's not organic. Just on PPC, that can return you 250, or sometimes it could be a lot higher, like I've had campaigns where I'm spending 300 a day on one product that's then returning potentially 1K upwards in sales. Now, that remember, that's sales. That's not profit alone, that's sales. So you have to take off Amazon commissions and stuff like that. But the great thing is, once you get that flywheel going on Amazon, this process working, your ranking is improving all the time, you're also making profitable PPC sales as well, well then you can't really lose with that product and then the danger is uh, going out of stock, which is a real problem because if this is working very well for you, you can keep increasing the budget on your campaign and it's still making you a lot of profit and a lot of sales, well, eventually you're gonna have to really manage your stock very well. And you have to understand that at these high spends, there are fluctuations throughout the year. There is seasonality really comes into this and you might find that suddenly the 300 is not making a 1000. And it's not because there's anything wrong with your listing, it's just because the search demand for that product might have dropped 20, 30% month on month. And then next month it might go up dramatically as well. So that's what you have to kind of keep an eye on. And that's a little bit more kind of advanced. I'm more than happy to discuss that in a different video. But that's kind of how it works with PPC. There are a lot of elements, a lot of factors, but keep it very, very simple and understand what you're doing when it comes to Amazon spend. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you all in the next video.